Bible says, and it came to pass in the process of time. Everybody shout out, in the process of time. That's my topic for the day. And it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived and bore a son and called her name Samuel, saying, because I have acts for him from the Lord. Saying, I have acts for him from the Lord. When we talk about process, when we talk about process, in the process of time, process is a systematic series of actions directed to some end. I want to repeat it. It's a systematic series of actions directed to some end. Or it, is, it can be described as a continuous action, operation, or a series of changes taking place in a definite manner, in a definite manner. When we talk about time, time is a measurable period during which an action or condition exists or continues. Among the Hebrew people, units of time were measured in hours, days, weeks, months, and years. The more abstract concept of time is also mentioned in the Bible. When we talk about time, it, is, it is, can also be described as the period between two eternities. And God knows that there are some times in our lives when we feel like we are going uh, whatever is occurring in time feels like eternity. Mm. So we want to look at the story today in a very brief way. You know it very well. The Bible, um, the story is really summed up in, in verse number two. That there is a man whose name is Alcana who has two wives, whereas... Um, uh, we understand that God's desire is that a man has one wife. His desire is that a man has one wife until death do us part. But nevertheless, um, these practices, though not, um, though not from God, were practiced in those days. And the Bible says one of them had uh, uh, children, and we will see in this text that uh, Penina has sons and daughters. And uh, according to verse number four, but Hannah has none. Hannah has none. Now we will see in the text that the scripture declares that the reason for Hannah's uh, barrenness is all because of God. It is all because God had closed her womb. I want to ask you a couple questions as I, 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 I bring this message quickly to a close. What do you do when your desires seem to be in conflict with God's process and timing? Why does, it, why does it seem like, like other people's lives are filled with fulfillment one after another and yours just seem to be structured with one hardship after another? Well, why are you talking like this? Because the story today uh, tells us of two types of of mothers. One we see that has children and the other who has none. One who we, 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 we later learn is a worshiper 
and one who is a jealous wife. Why does it seem, brothers and sisters, like we have to fight so hard for everything that you desire while the other person seemingly gets everything that they want? Do I have anybody in the house? Oh, 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 let, let me just help you with it if you don't understand what, 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 what the question is. What I want to know is, why is it that, that, that there are, are some women, watch this, that without a struggle can get with a man and easily produce a child? And you got some marriages that have been going for some 10 years and 12 years and and still unable to produce a child. And, and the couples are struggling with this event. As a matter of fact, there are some marriages that have not survived the fire of God's process. Need to ask you this question. And what can we learn from Hannah today as we look at a similar story? Where God is the chief orchestrator of what we're reading. The scripture says that this woman, Hannah, had a husband but no child. It seems like everything should have been right. Now let's look at this for a moment. He got two wives and it takes a man and a woman to produce. Okay, I don't want to mess with this, but I just want to tell those who are listening to me, that's why... Two kinds can't make nothing. All right, okay, okay. I just thought I would throw that in. I know I'm no hater of gays and lesbians, but I'm just trying to tell you something. Uh, uh, the minute you step out of that order, you're done wasting your time. Because if all of us went queer, oh, 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 Pastor, leave it alone. We soon ain't gonna have no more children in the neighborhood. So God, it must have been God's order that a man would be with a woman. Mm, let's move on. Uh, but now we see this man. He is in this marriage and he has two wives. And one is producing and the other isn't. So clearly we understand that Elkanah ain't the problem. I, I just said something. We clearly understand Elkanah isn't the problem. Now let's, let, let me lift something for you that you may not understand. Hannah's womb has been closed by God, but God hasn't told her. Anybody up in here? What do you do when God has plans for your life and he hasn't told you anything? And you have got to be subject to his plans and his process and he ain't told you nothing, baby. Ain't nobody want to talk to me. God ain't told her nothing. And as far as you're concerned, if Elkan, sorry, if Panina, the pearl, is having children. Come on here now. My name means grace. And the last time I checked, grace means favor. How could I be named favor and I ain't seeing the favor in my womb? Come on. I ain't holding none in my hand. There's some of us that going to struggle, hallelujah, when y'all ain't want to talk to me. There's some of us that struggle when it looks like things should be going in your favor. And it looks like things are going in the person who don't deserve it. Pearl got everything and Gracie ain't got nothing. Grace ain't got nothing in her hand. Pearl got everything. Hello, somebody. God hasn't told Hannah anything. 